If you've been following this series, surely by now you've been challenged, or if you've not been challenged, you've been blessed. Amen? Amen. Who have you been challenged? Come on, be honest now. Who have you been challenged? If you haven't been challenged, you haven't been listening. So I'm going to ask again, who have you been challenged? Amen. No, Pastor, I haven't been listening. I'm just here for the boy band. Well, praise Jesus then, because they will bless you. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, they will bless you. And through worship and praise, you might just experience something you've never experienced in your life. You know, I just love worship, and I believe that, that w- that's one of the principles of the kingdom, just as praise, and when we put it into practice in our lives. I mean, there's somebody needs to hear this. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call you out. God wants you to hear this. On your way to work, you listen to the radio. He's telling you, put off the junk and put in some praise and worship. You've been wanting change. Now here is your message. Your message in changing your ways. When you involve Him in your everyday life, He'll be involved in your everyday life. Amen? So this morning, we're going to end off with this series that we've been um, spending some time on since the beginning of January. And um, it is bearing fruit in and out of season. Uh, We started this series off with the fast, and you started it off with us with a little booklet, a little daily devotional, and um, that challenged us in bearing fruit. Amen? But right through this series, the Holy Spirit has been opening up more and more about bearing fruit and how we can get to a place of bearing fruit, bearing more fruit, bearing much fruit, and bearing fruit that remains. If your aim as a disciple or a child of God is not to bear fruit that remains, then I'm going to ask you this morning, what are you doing? What are you busy with? Because that not your aim, and your aim is maybe something else, then coming to church will benefit you very little. Maybe the worship and the praise will benefit you. But you need to challenge yourself and understand that you are good enough for Jesus Christ and His kingdom. You need to understand that He's calling us to discipleship and bearing fruit. Not just on Sundays, not just when we want to bear fruit, but in an everyday kind of way. Amen? Amen. Say to the one next to you, I'm going to do it every day in that kind of way. Amen? Amen. So this morning I'm going to share with you the conclusion of this message. And there is a bit of notes but I know that you'll be blessed by it and through it. So when we started this series, some of you forgot where we started. So I'm going to just go back to where we started. We started this series, who of you can remember, we started in Luke 6, right? I told you to look in Luke 6. And there we, we saw Jesus speaking about a good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit, right? And then I said these words, I said that in Scripture, a lot of times, we, or we are referred to as trees. I may remember that? We're all different kinds of trees, because we're unique. But then we went on and we said, but what we are called to be is fruit trees, right? Not just trees that have branches, or maybe have leaves, but that there will be fruit on the tree. I just want to say this quickly, just to, 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 to share the importance of that with you. 
Jesus walks on his way and he walks past a fig tree. And he goes to the fig tree looking for fruit. And there is no fruit on the fig tree. Jesus rebukes, rebukes the fruit tree because there is no fruit. That fig tree unfortunately represented the Jewish nation, represented Israel. Because when Messiah came, there was no fruit. They did not accept him. They did not accept the kingdom. Let that not be like that with us. Amen. When Jesus walks past your life tomorrow morning, and you're a fig tree, might he find fruit pleasing to him. Amen. Amen. So that is the importance of understanding that we are called all to fruit bearing. You can't sit here this morning and say, oh, um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it to my wife. She can go to church. She can bear fruit. And I'm just going to I'm just going to take the easy way out here. I'm going to sit on the fence, right? No, no, no. You are called. If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a son, a daughter of God, if you call, you've accepted Jesus Christ, you have been called to become his disciples and you've been called to bear fruit. Amen? So we've established that. And then... You can go there. We're going to go there this morning. Then we looked at the book of Galatians 5 verse 22. And you can page there because by now all of you know the fruits of the Spirit, right? Not so. Okay, those that want to know the fruit of the Spirit knows it and reads about it. So a lot of times we only read what we want to adhere to. The things that we don't want to adhere to, we skip. Almost. We're like, oh, no, that verse is for another day and another season. Amen. But you can't just take the nicey nicey out of God's word, the things that suit you out of God's word. You need to take the whole word of God and you need to take it in context and you need to apply it. You need to get knowledge first, apply it in your life so that applied knowledge becomes wisdom so that you start walking in the word. You start living that way. Otherwise, once again, if that is not our aim, to become Christ-like, to be as He is, to live the way He wants us to live, then we're only playing church and we're only soothing our own conscience. conscience. So that is not our aim, amen, as a flock here on the farm. As partners of Kingdom Within Ministries, we, our aim is to, in all our getting, to get understanding so that those that are lost might see the kingdom in us, the Holy Spirit, and be drawn by God into this kingdom and give their lives to this kingdom and that this kingdom would advance and that as it advances in the spirit, Jesus Christ will come back and put it up in the natural. Amen? So, you can open at Galatians 5.22, but I want to say this. I started with the... Um, Luke 6, then we went to John 15. We spoke in Luke 6 about us being trees. Then we went over to John 15 and we spoke about the vine, Jesus Christ as the vine and we as the branches. And we looked at it intensely. If we're not abiding in the vine, if we as the branch do, doesn't stay connected to the vine, we cannot bear fruit. Matter of fact, we wither away. We, 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 we will spiritually die. So we looked at um, John 15, and in John 15, we saw Jesus saying the words that you would bear fruit, that you'll bear more fruit, that you'll bear much fruit, and then in the last two weeks, we looked intensely at verse 16, that you will bear fruit that remains, fruit that will last, amen, which I said right through this series or in the last couple of weeks that it is supernatural fruit that the Messiah is referring to because fruit cannot, normal, natural fruit cannot last unless 
you persevere it or preserve it. What's it? Not pers- preserve it, right? My oma had it gedoen. Jy leg hom in in a camphor bottle. Jy kook al die goed uit hom uit. En dan gooi jy syke nicey nicey stroop oor hom. And then you camphor bottle him. And then you preserve him, right? Amen. Anyway. I just see. Wie van jylle hou van waar het limoen stikke? Who of you know that? God is good, and all the time. So, then we looked at John 15, and in the last two weeks, last week more particularly, we looked at Luke 9, 23, and I ended off with John 12, 23 to 24. And we looked at um, a seed that dies um, in, in, the, in the scripture of, of um, Luke 9, we looked at denying ourselves. You remember that? Some of you don't want to remember that. Denying ourselves, taking up our cross, which means being obedient and submissive to God's will and doing it daily. You remember that? Okay, so I've refreshed your mind. So, in conclusion to this series, you might still sit here and think, okay, that was a whole lot, Pastor. Give it to me straight. And I'm so glad you're here. Because I've, and the Holy Spirit have summed it up in seven steps. Not that I'm saying there's seven steps of bearing fruit. I'm saying it's a lifestyle. But I'm giving you this to help you. Amen. So number one, stay planted. Dash connected. Stay planted. When we got to that, I said a lot of people are not planted. They're not planted trees. They, then they're here, then they're there, right? Then they're there and there and church-wise. They go to seven or eight churches. Naturally, if you uproot a tree seven or eight times in one month or in two months, what will happen with the tree? I promise you it'll die. So number one, stay rooted, stay connected. If you're not rooted, if you're not planted, get rooted, get planted. Amen? Amen. Important, get rooted and get planted where number two happens, where you are watered and pruned. So where you planted, watering and pruning needs to happen. Who have you been pruned through this series? (laughs) It's like six of you. Who have you been watered through the series? Water is not damaging. See, everybody's going up. (laughs) Pruneer. I don't want to be pruned. You know, it's not bad to be pruned. Because when you're pruned, fruit becomes more fruit. And when you prune, more fruit becomes much fruit. Sometimes our view on things are different to God's view on things. Amen? I said you're... Number two, allow watering and pruning, and I put in brackets, the tree needs to be cared for. You as a tree needs to be cared for. Number three. Comes out of John. It said, abide in Jesus Christ. Abide in Jesus Christ. Number three. I said you're in brackets. A branch can do nothing on its own. Abide in the vine. Abide in Jesus Christ. A branch cannot branch on its own. It has to be connected. It has to abide in the vine who who is Jesus Christ. Number four. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus says when you are pruned, you'll bear fruit. And then he says when you abide in me, I will abide in you. So when we start accepting Jesus Christ and we start abiding in Him, we follow His Word, then we receive the Holy Spirit baptism. And through the Holy Spirit baptism, living inside of us and also upon us, we get Christ's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, abiding in us. Amen? I said here in brackets, Jesus sent the Helper. 
God the Father sent the helper. He said to, in, in John 16, he said, it's to your benefit that I go away because if I don't go away, the helper, the comforter will not come. So the helper there in John 16 verse 7, if you want the scripture, is receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Who have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on Fire Sunday? Amen. So you've received number four. Number five, receive the baptism of fire. This is receive the power and the ability of the Holy Spirit upon and in your life. You will find it very difficult to bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains if you haven't received the Holy Spirit and fire. You know, the fire of the Holy Spirit is like a fertilizer to a tree. It is, the fire of the Holy Spirit keeps the fire in us burning. Amen? Number five, you got, receive the fire, baptism. Number six, we looked at last week, deny yourself. This is one of the things we struggle with as people. I said in brackets, surrender your will and plans. Not some of it. Not some of it. All of it. I said, we spoke about obedience, we spoke about submission. And I said, partial obedience is disobedience. Let me tell you something. Partial surrender is no surrender. So you say to me, you haven't been challenged up to now? Okay. So here's your challenge. If you've surrendered everything to Christ except a couple, no, Lord. I, you know what? I can still look after my children better than God can. I can protect my children better than God can. I can figure out my financial status and how we go about this. I can run this business. Then you in partial surrender. And you in no surrender at all. Last week I said you must pray over your toes. That was one of, your, one of the toe steppers, right? But you have to forgive me. Number seven, become obedient to God's will Daily. Become obedient to God's will, God's plan, God's purpose for your life daily. Living, I said last week in brackets, I said, yeah, live, living for Him in a moment by moment way. Who of you broke up the days in this week? Who of you actually went and did what the Holy Spirit gave us? And broke up the day into hours and broke it up into moments. And in moments in the day he said, Lord, I choose to surrender. I choose to be obedient to your will. See, I can stand here with the Holy Spirit teaching my heart out. Billy Ray Cyrus, eat your heart out. Man. <laughs> if you don't take it and you don't apply it, it won't work. It won't work for you. You can listen to it all day long. You can listen to me on repeat, on the recording, all day long. And all you're going to know and enjoy is my beautiful voice. But if you don't apply it, it's going to be nothing. It's going to mean nothing to your life. Because Logos is Logos. The letter kills. But Rhema... Rhema changes. Rhema is not Rhema Koli. It's not Rhema Church. Rhema Church stands for that. It's spelled the same way. Rhema is Logos breathed, into, breathed by the Holy Spirit into existence. So Logos, the letter that kills through the Spirit becomes Rhema that gives life. So you need to take it, you need to decide to yourself, listen, I don't think Pastor Rob is standing in front there and talking all that much 
nonsense. I'm going to actually take it and I'm going to apply it on my life and I'm going to put it to the test. If you haven't been challenged, then here's your challenge. Test this series. Test what I'm giving you and see what the Holy Spirit will do in your life. But you have to do it. You have to commit. You have to apply it to your life. You have to be obedient. You have to be submissive. You have to deny yourself and be obedient to God's will for your life. So, I broke it up like this. I put, number one, to bear fruit. And then next to it, I said, the tree has to be rooted. And the tree needs to be taken care of. That is the start of John 15. That is the start of bearing fruit. Just bearing fruit. You, as a tree, needs to be rooted and you need to be taken care of. Then underneath that, I put to bear more fruit. To bear more fruit, I said next to it, a branch can't do nothing without the vine. So to bear more fruit, we have to abide in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Under that, I put to bear much fruit. Remember we said there's four, right? So it's like this. Bear fruit, bear more fruit, bear much fruit, bear fruit that remains. Do you know why Christianity doesn't work for people? For a lot of people. Do you know that? Why? Because here's the four levels of bearing fruit. And they stuck here in religion. They haven't become rooted. And if they're rooted, they're not taken care of and they're not watered. Therefore, what do you think would happen to the tree? If it's not taken care of and it's not watered. There is people that have been planted in a church for 40 years. And all that they are is dead trees. Dead in their religion. Dead in their old traditions. Dead in their beliefs. You need watering. You need taking care of. You need to be chastened by the Lord. You need to be challenged by the Holy Spirit. You need to allow Him to do these things in your life. This is why so many people walk away from the church, walk away from Christianity, and they say these words, Nee, ek het die ding probeer, dit werk vir my nie. I'm going to say this, and it's one of my favorite statements. If Jesus is not Lord of all, He's not Lord at all. You know when a relationship, and when Christianity, we call it Christian, you know when it works beautifully? It's when you and I die, and we receive what He's paid for already. When we put our efforts away and we say, yes, Lord, here I am. You say I must be rooted. You, must, you say I must be taken care of. I'm going to make that decision with you. And then you start bearing fruit. I mean, it's like some of us, it's like a slap in the face. We get out. We're on our way to work. And this funny little white minibus swipes us. And you're like, may the Lord bless you. And you're like, whoa, where did it come from? Because the old Rob would have showed him how old I am. Right? The old Rob would have chased around him, cut in front of him, put my brakes and hazards. Tony? 
I know who I'm talking to. Road rage is real. But when we start bearing fruit, it's like a slap. And we're like, wow. Or we've been, we had a very interesting vocabulary. And all of a sudden, those vocabulary words don't come out anymore. And it slaps us. Because we're like, whoa. Ek het nie vir hom gesê, voetsek nie. Wow. That is the first sign of bearing fruit. Who have experienced that? Am I, am I preaching to myself? You know that the way I would have acted and conducted myself and the way I just did is different. And you're almost surprised by it and you're like, wow. And then you ask yourself the question, why? And then you walk in here with that question and the beautiful pastor tells you, since you've been coming to a Holy Spirit-filled church, your life cannot stay the same. Since you've been opening up to the Holy Spirit, not me, the Holy Spirit, His glory, He will not leave you alone and not leave you the same. Even at home, you have a tiff with your wife or your husband. And there is words, but the vocabulary has changed. Right? No, no. Okay. That's bearing more fruit. Okay. Hi, Papa, hoor. Die bere praat al weer hard met mekaar. Een van hulle moet seker doof wees. Ek dink hulle is al twee doof. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering. Underneath bearing fruit, I put bear more fruit, and I said abide in Jesus, and then the third one is bear much fruit, and there I said receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. It'll be difficult to bear much fruit without the Holy Spirit and fire. I believe with all my heart this is when we start maturing in Christ. This is when the elementary things doesn't bother us anymore. Paul writes about the elementary things of the laying on of hands and this and the other that still bother those that are on milk. He says, let's put the elementary things aside. When we mature in Christ, then, then we start bearing much fruit, but we can only bear much fruit if we've received the Holy Spirit and fire. It will be very difficult. I want to say impossible to bear much fruit if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And you don't have his power and his fire. It'll be difficult. This is a place where God takes you and he maybe puts you in a leader position or he, he, he gives you disciples or he, he, he uses you as a mentor. And then those under you, those that you lead, have no fruit. Those that you lead, become disloyal to you or betray you. This is the place where we call to bear much fruit. This is the place where Jesus said, pray for your enemies. <laughs> you know, we always say, forgive, 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 forgive. And I say, but forget not. I will not forget what they have done. Not. Your deaf and dumb spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Your stubborn spirit, come out in Jesus' name. It's time to forgive and to bless your enemies. Understand this, that your pastor definitely has been challenged with this. I've got a couple of enemies and I pray that God will bless them. And that the blessing of the Lord will fall upon their house. And God knows my heart. 
I do not lie. That is the place of true forgiveness, and that is the place where we start bearing much fruit. But boy, oh boy, if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you have the, don't have His fire, your heart will remain hardened. You will remain bitter. And not long from there, you will fall sick. Because bitterness, says the word, is, is something that rots the bones. Unforgiveness. Listen to me. Most of the sicknesses right now known to this planet on earth is caused by two things. Anxiety and stress and unforgiveness. 98% of all diseases come out of spiritual roots. I saw a young man restore the relationship with his father. And in three months, got healed from leukemia. Something the doctors said is a death sentence. He came for counseling. I asked him, brother, how was your relationship with your father? His words were to me, we hate each other. We haven't spoken for years. I said to him, your healing is in this. Your healing is in restoring the relationship with your earthly father. You can't hate him. It is not scriptural. He went, put his pride in his pocket, and he went to his father and asked him his forgiveness. In the beginning, it was difficult, right? But he knew, and he believed God, and he got healed. Four months later, the doctor said there's no sign of leukemia, no sign of cancer. That's a place where you can give Jesus a praise offering. And then number four, I put here, to bear fruit that remains. Boy, oh boy. Next to it, I put, to deny yourself, to surrender your will and become obedient. Living for Him in a moment-to-moment -moment way. I believe this is the place. Where your plans and your future without Christ doesn't matter to you anymore. I believe this is a place where Paul found himself and wrote these words that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Where he came to a place where he could write that for me to live is Christ. Has Christ become all? That you're living for? Deny yourself. You might sit here this morning and say, why all of this, pastor? You know, it amazed me when, no, it didn't amaze me because God's spirit is amazing. But when, when the worship team started singing the last worship song, I just smiled because we don't discuss anything. We don't discuss the set. I believe the same Holy Spirit in me is the same Holy Spirit in Zayn and in this worship team, and they would lead, He will lead them as He leads me. But remember, halfway through the series, I gave you John 15 verse 8. Year in, the Father is glorified. You see, your life, brother and sister, is to glorify God. You are here ultimately the main purpose. You and I 
are here for is to bring glory to the Father. You might sit here and think, why all of this? Why all these steps? Why must I go through this and bear fruit? Why must I get planted and rooted and taken care of? Why must I abide in Jesus? Why must I receive the Holy Spirit? Why must I get this fire? Why must I deny myself my plans, my will? Why must I be obedient, submissive? Why must I do it daily in a moment by moment way? Why all of this? I can tell you why. Because year in, God the Father is glorified. Here is the, I don't even know what to know, what to, to call it. Here is the nutcracker. Your life and my life brings glory. It brings glory to something. And it either brings glory to the world or yourself or it brings glory to the one you live for. The one who if he is taken away, you are taken away. The one that holds you, upholds you, keeps you, and without him, you cannot live, you cannot breathe, you cannot go one more day. The choice, once again, is our will or His will. I've chosen and I've said my life will not bring glory to the world. My life will not bring glory to myself. My life will not even bring glory to this ministry. My life will bring glory to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. For in Him I live and move and have my being. And He is all and everything to me. And I want you to give Him a praise offering like never before. Come on. Yes, Lord. What do you live for? I see it on social media. I hear people say it all the time. I live for my kids. I live for my kinners. It's all great. God honors that. He gave them to you. But if you're living for them, and it's not through Him, you're living in vain. You know what the word says? If the builder builds the house without God eternal, the God of Israel, he builds in vain. I know there is things that are important to you this morning. But what I'm telling you is that God is important to Rerer. He should be more important than anything in your life. Now you know me, but this morning I'm gonna end with this. God is more important to me than ice cream. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering. I mean this, and you know my heart on ice cream. If I have to choose to never taste ice cream again, and God forbid. If I have to choose and spend my days with Him, spend my life eternally with Him, it is not even a choice. You know, when me and my wife got married, we made a vow that not even either one of us comes before God. I didn't die for her on the cross, and she didn't die for me on the cross. But Yeshua Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, this, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the bright morning star, the Son of God, the Root of Jesse, Emmanuel, He died for me on the cross. Therefore, I will live for Him and Him alone, and He gets all of me.
tap the one next to you. And if you mean it, say to him or her, I'm giving him my all. Don't say it lightly. Mean it. Even in this week, in your days, in this week, only God knows your heart. He checks your heart. He knows where you're at. I'm prophetic, but I don't know those things. God knows. And I truly believe God laid this series on our heart for this reason, to prepare the bride of Christ. To make disciples that will follow him no matter the cost. No matter sitting here in, a, in, a, in 30 degrees. No matter being sweaty and thinking, yo, is varam. No matter what the price is. I will stand in the, in the desert place teaching and witnessing for Christ. Would you? Just give Jesus a praise offering, please. Lord, we thank you for this series. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've challenged us and you keep on challenging us. And this morning, Lord, it's my heart and my heart's prayer that you would stir the hearts of the listeners. Even in the closing of this series, those that will listen to this, that you would right there, it doesn't matter, you are the God of time, space, and matter. Even if this is listened years later, Lord, that right there, right, right in this moment, that you would stir the hearts of that one that is listening, that you'll stir the heart. From just being a Christian to become a fruit-bearing child of God. To become a fruit-bearing child of God that remains steadfast, consistent, unchanged like you. Not tossed to and fro by every kind of doctrine, but that we would be rooted in in you that we will be find, found in you that we will be watered by your spirit that we will abide in you and that your holy spirit will guide us and lead us and that lord we will come to a place where we come to full surrender denying ourselves and taking up our crosses being obedient to your will and you alone and your purpose for our lives. Through this year, Lord, will you help us? Now, this won't be just a serious thing that it would end after this, but that we would take this as a, a start of a new life, a start of a new season, a start of a new road that we are on. And that all through all this, Lord, that the reason will remain to bring you glory, to glorify you, our Father in heaven. Praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Will you give your angels charge, Lord, as we go from here? Even to evening campus tonight, Lord. I know you've got something special prepared for us. Would we find time in our busy day in our busy schedule, to even attend a second time? How hungry are we, Lord? How surrendered are we? You alone can work with us. You alone can work with our hearts. And that is my prayer for your people this morning. 
I pray it in all, all of this in your matchless name, the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.